What is up you guys? So in this one we're going to do something really interesting. I'm going to show you how to use the CVX toolbox to solve any optimization problem you have in hand. Now we're going to, to make use of previous lectures and in particular the SVM lecture. We're going to grab the primal and dual problems that we have, that is this problem over here, the primal problem of the SVM and its corresponding dual problem and solve both using the CVX toolbox and then you know compare the outcomes or the solutions with the ones that we computed previously right so without further ado let's get started so in a previous lecture on SVMs we discussed what an SVM is by introducing the notion of support vectors and the notion of the maximum margin hyperplane, we formulated the primal problem and its corresponding dual problem, right? We also wrote a MATLAB script that generates our data set and solves the primal problem, right? As you can see right here, this is what we saw. So given the blue and red classes, so this is my data set, this script is responsible on figuring out this yellow hyperplane, right? Namely by computing the beta, that is the normal vector to the hyperplane, and the intercept b. In this one we're going to make use of the CVX toolbox. This is based upon many emails I received. So many students have been asking how could we use the CVX to solve an optimization problem? Well this one is going to be dedicated for the CVX. We're going to see how to download it, how to install it in our workspace, how to get the environment ready to solve an optimization problem using CVX. We're also going to make sure that CVX is giving the same answer as what we got here, namely the beta star and the B star. We're going to see that we're going to get the same results. Otherwise, there would have been something wrong, right? So the way you install CVX is first you go to this link, cvxr.com slash cvx slash doc slash install html you can go down here the website or simply just cvxr.com slash cvx slash download and here you've got different packages each for a certain operating system so if you're on linux you download this mac you download this or windows whether it's a 32-bit or 64-bit you download the appropriate package. So since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to download the Mac package. You go ahead and unzip it. So this is the CVX package. And next, you go ahead and copy the CVX folder to the working directory on MATLAB. That is over here, go ahead and paste it, right? The next off, you're going to have to CD to that directory, then run CVX set up with some time and there you go then you go ahead and cd out you're here so now to test that cvx is actually working you go ahead and type cvx begin if this runs with no error then all is good so now since we've got cvx installed let us solve the primal problem that we have over here right so we're going to minimize this cost the norm of beta subject to this those n constraints, right? So how do you make use of CVX to solve this, right? This is what I'm going to show you right now. Let's go ahead and create a new script or a function called SVM primal. So we're going to solve the primal problem. Go ahead and clean all this. So let's think for a moment. Since in the main we're given the data set X and the labels Y, let's input that to our function, right? Now the output of the function is going to be the beta and the B, right? The beta variables we're solving for. Right? So now what do we do? Let's extract the dimensions of x, since we're going to use them to define the size of our variables. And let's open a CVX so every optimization problem will start with a CVX begin and a CVX end. Right? This is sort of like, you know, the four end loop in MATLAB. So let's say you're writing for k going from 1 to n and end right the four is like the equivalent of cvx begin and the end is the equivalent of cvx end right 
So going back here, your optimization problem will go inside. First, you will define the so-called variables. What are the variables here? They're beta and b. We're, we're minimizing with respect to those variables. So beta and b. Now next, you have to pay attention to the dimensions of beta and b. Since beta takes the dimension of the number of columns of x, that is p, you have to mention it explicitly. Now b, since it's a scalar, I'm not going to go ahead and do this. CVX will understand implicitly that if I do not specify the dimensions of a variable, then it is a scalar, right? So I'll leave it as is. So after defining the variables, next we're going to have to minimize with respect to a certain cost, right? So going back here, focusing on the optimization problem we have, we're going to have to minimize the norm of beta square, right? Or you can just forget about this half really because minimizing the norm is the equivalent of minimizing a multiple of the norm. In other words, we're minimizing the norm of beta. Then after the minimization, it's just we're copy pasting this. It's, it's really easy to use. It's that you have beta transpose xi plus b times yi should be greater than one. Um, so it's y times x times beta plus b greater than 1, right? Okay, good. And that's it. This is what you need. Now let's try to make use of this function over here. This is what we implemented last time, and this is using a block over here, is solving SVM primal using the CVX toolbox, right? We're going to paste it over here, and this block over here was to compute the xy pairs that generate the hyperplane. So in the same spirit, we're going to do the same thing for the new beta. So beta underscore prime stands for the primal beta, and b underscore prime stands for the primal b. So over here, this is a beta prime, and this is a b prime, and this is a beta prime. And this yk is generated using the cvx, using the svm primal, so underscore prime. That said, we're going to have to initialize it to something and as such. All looks good, so we're going to have to hold on and plot the yk prime, the one generated using the CVX toolbox or the SVM underscore primal function, will be plotted in red, right? So let's run this, and we have an error. That is, oh, so I cannot use beta as a name. That's okay, because beta is reserved for something else in CVX. Well, let's name it something else. Let's name it, I can't name it as a B, because we already have B. Let's try uppercase B. We have this, this, and this. So run again, same error. Let's name something else. Let's call it W. Some references you find a W vector instead of beta. So I'll call it W. Oh, so here's a W. So run. Try another error in line 63. Oh, so, so there's a problem over here. You should specify color as the name of the property. Then it's value. Red. Run again. And there you go. So there's a bit of a shift in B because we computed it as, an, as a simple average. That's okay. So if we go here and just check the values of beta using our program, minus 8.1 and minus 3.15, and beta prime, again, the same values. So the beta is the same. However, b and b prime are different. They, they vary by that much. It's because if you recall from the previous lecture, from the SVM lecture, over here that the star is computed as a simple average. This is not necessarily what could be done. Some in some references you find a weighted average. Say it's multiplied by lambda i. Let's let's modify this and see if we get the same result. So this b over here, instead of all this, we also multiply it with lambda k. Let's see if we get the same thing. And there you go. This is it. Two lines align properly. So B and B prime. Okay, so this is how you get the job done using the primal problem. Now let's see what we get using the dual problem. That is, what if we don't want to solve this primal problem, right? We want to instead solve the dual and check to get the same solution, right? So this is sometimes helpful if you want to check for a strong duality on the go. That is, you want to check if the primal and the dual problems are giving you the same solution. So how do you get the job done? Well, as we did previously, we're going to create a new function called SVM dual, pass it x and y, and it outputs w and b. 
right? Go ahead and save it. And so we can also output the lambdas because this the dual always solves with respect to lambda. That is, the lambda is the only variable here. That said, if we open a CVX begin and a CVX end variable, you want to define is only the lambda. So L L stands for lambda. I think lambda is also reserved for CVX, so we're not going to use lambda, we'll use an L instead. This is the only variable, and what is N? It is the number of rows in X. So yeah, this is the variable. What are we minimizing? So we're minimizing half lambda transpose P lambda minus Q transpose lambda. So let's type that N, half times lambda transpose times P times lambda minus Q transpose times L subject to so subject to two constraints positivity on lambda and q transpose lambda is zero so how do you do that just type that down lambda is positive and y transpose lambda is zero so in case you have an equality make sure you insert two equal signs so it's sort of like a conditional if x equal one if x double equal one right same thing so this is it. What remains is our given matrix P and the vector Q. Well, what is P and what is Q? Go back up. P is given by this equation, xi transpose xj times yi times yj, which we computed in the main function over here, right? So we can just pass P and Q as inputs. So let's do that. P and Q are given. And there you go. So at this point of the code, we have lambda. So how do we compute W and B? Well, W is, so it's the same thing we had previously. So over here, given lambda, we compute the beta and B. So we're going to copy paste this over here. Instead of beta, we'll call W and initialize them to zeros. So beta is all zeros, so is B. Well, this is it. This is how you get the job done. Let's go ahead and run this. And over here, Set up a yk prime, I'll put yk dual, right? Same thing, we're going to compute the xy pairs that just plots my hyperplane. So yk dual, beta dual, b dual, and a beta dual. Now I'll plot the yk dual in blue. Let's run, got an error. So w is undefined. Well, okay, let's go back here. So yeah, this beta should be a w, my bad. So run, another error. Lambda is undefined. Oh, okay. Remember, we called it an L. So this is an L, right? Run. And there you go. Actually, let's... There's a problem over here. Um, Let's place dash client. So I'm going to move this and this. And there you go. So what do we have here? Zoom in. Actually, let's... <laughs> The primal hyperplane, let's plot it in dashed red, and the in the blue hyperplane, let's plot it in a dotted line, using a dotted line. Right? And there you have it. The dotted and the one we saw for are the same. That is the, the dual that we saw for, and the equation and our solution are the same, give the same solution, but there's always this small gap due to this different B. You see they're parallel. That is, they all have the same beta. You can go ahead and verify beta, beta, beta prime, and beta dual are the same. Whereas B, B prime, and B dual are all different. Actually, B and B dual are the same. That's why both lines align. So this is how you get the job done. This is how you implement the primal and dual problems using the CVX toolbox. I hope you found this lecture beneficial. This is just showing you how you could implement different optimization problems using the CVX toolbox. So this is it for this lecture. I hope you found it beneficial. This lecture was to show you how to use the CVX toolbox on MATLAB to solve any optimization problem you have in hand. How to translate your optimization problem into CVX notation on MATLAB. Through an example, we showed you how to use CVX to solve the primal and dual problems of the SVM. Also, we compared the solutions of the primal and dual problems with the one we implemented, and we showed that it is actually the same, right? So thanks for watching. If you found this lecture beneficial, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, just leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I'll respond as soon as possible. Thank you so much, and I'll see you then.